And a good Monday afternoon to you. This weather video is driven by 802cars.com. It represents 802 Toyota, Twin City, Subaru, and 802 Honda. They're all located off of Exit 7 on Interstate 89. Weather pattern is one that uh, predominates with a northwesterly flow. This is spinning around large gyres up in the uh, northern areas here, up in the uh, Labrador coast, uh, eastern portions of Canada. That's the controlling influence on our weather and uh, bringing down still temperatures that are well below zero across good portions of Ontario and Quebec. This is uh, promoting a little bit of scattered snow showers, but uh, this is a very dry weather pattern and it consistently will continue this way. We have a surface area of higher pressure to our south that's going to be edging in. This is bringing three days of dry weather, the rest of today Monday, all of Tuesday, and all of Wednesday. We'll turn the corner with a change in the weather pattern, but not until about Thursday. And as you can see here, there's very little precipitation in the east. A couple lake, uh, lake effect flurries and snow showers immediately downwind of uh, the uh, Great Lakes. But uh, when Georgian Bay shot of moisture tries to make a run into Vermont, this would happen somewhere along about Tuesday. Uh, it does look like it's uh, going to dry up and high pressure will be the main influence. As you can see, it's broad and without very little precipitation, modified Arctic air mass in place. Eventually, we have a shortwave trough that's going to work in, pick up some moisture from the Great Lakes. And it's going to also cause some inflow coming in from the Atlantic. This will eventually spin up a nor'easter. This will be very late in the period. You can see this here. This is valid roughly about Thursday evening, Thursday night, Friday. And you can see most of that moisture then catapults uh, pretty quickly through parts of uh, New Hampshire, Maine, and into New Brunswick and the Canadian Maritimes, and then pulls away. We have a strong gusty northwesterly wind on the back side of that departing area of low pressure. And take a look at this. Eventually we will see pretty much a wide area here showing temperatures that would support rain over snow, all except for the northeast United States. This eventually will change as well, and it will kind of oscillate back and forth uh, due to these uh, stronger bouts of Arctic air still continuing to cross parts of eastern Canada and occasionally get into the United States, uh, especially the northeast. And the GFS quantitative precipitation forecast shown uh, would ignore these, uh, would take a look at this, however, and this is going to be our sort of mixed rain and snow. This is a th three hour QPF. We're not talking about very much, and we don't have very much moisture in this kind of situation anyway, but it does develop as we get into the later part of the week. Now, uh, the total amounts of moisture is here, and you can see that it just barely gets under, uh, looks like around five tenths, but that's not to around the 23rd, 24th. So we're talking over the weekend. And this uh, next uh, shot looks like it could develop a little bit of uh, snow showers mixed with rain showers. Again, a little bit of wet snow in our local higher terrain, but nothing that would affect utilities. And it's uh, primarily cold enough for snow thereafter. These are just the chances of what type of precipitation will fall. Now, the Europeans in disagreement with this, um, but uh, this is the GFS ensemble again centered on Montpelier, and it stays below the uh, zero degree isotherm at 850 hectopascals, so if that were to be true, we would probably see all snow. In terms of uh, precipitable water or measurement, a metric of uh, just how much moisture is in the atmosphere, you can see that uh, it's under really 45 hundredths of an inch. When things get uh, oh closer to flooding, and, you know, combined with snow melt, uh, typically you have to see it up a little bit closer to uh, say 9 tenths of an inch, uh, one inch amounts, but uh, precipitable water and a dry northwesterly flow uh, this is about all you're going to see. Now you can see some outliers here that try to make a run, but that's way down around the corner uh, as we head in toward the late part of uh, the, well, toward the late weekend and early next week. Talking about just how dry it is with that kind of a northwesterly flow, with that airflow coming in out of uh, source regions that are typically uh, frozen over, uh, meaning very dry. We're only seeing around 25 hundredths of an inch to our north. This is just one hundredth of an inch, and most of the action is really off the eastern seaboard, or it's in portions of the western U.S. As you can see here, looks like a lot more energy coming in from the Pacific. This is two meter temperatures from the GFS ensemble. You can see temperatures today uh, not quite getting up to 32 degrees, at least indicated by the GFS ensemble. I think that's a possibility based on current temperatures. But uh, tomorrow, we make it into the sort of mid and maybe some upper 30s from time to time. A little bit of uh, cloud cover, of course, for Thursday and then to Friday we start going back downhill. 
and then a little bit of an uptick as we get in toward uh, the first part of next week. Next five-day maximum temperatures are shown, uh, weighted, uh, so roughly about near normal, kind of neutral. You can see most of the warming is up in Canada and occasionally skirting into the northern part of the U.S., where most of the cooling is down south. And this is kind of an El Nino look, if anything. So that's the next five days. What about three days later? Same deal. Neutral in Vermont, near normal, with a little bit of warming across the northern tier, with colder air locked in, colder than normal conditions, actually, locked in across the, especially the southwestern part of the U.S., where the precipitation will be at its maximum. Roger Hill, thanks for watching.